and we're back and it doesn't seem like another week it's gone by so quickly hello everybody out there I, i'm going to put the gallery up for facebook people so everyone out on facebook can say hello to you and you in the gallery can say hello to facebook hi everybody nice to see you you're all looking good tonight nice big gallery tonight fantastic right okay just having a look at the running order fantastic show 10 fabulous magicians oh no nine plus me uh but moving over to the usa and our very first act alan fisher hi there alan hello kevin how are you tonight wonderful to see everyone uh, here's what i'm going to need anybody watching the show that has got uh paper and pen or pencil handy that can write down some playing cards we're going to select if you've got something like that handy and you'd like to help just raise your hand Stuart will bring you up next to me uh on the screen because we're going to try a little well hello there my friend go ahead and un unmute yourself Bernard so we can all say hi hello hello good to see you I am going to be doing something here with cards so let me pop down to my other camera now normally when I'm doing this live i'd have five different people helping me that's real tough to do over zoom so you you get to be schizophrenic and play all five parts <laughs> this is also why i had you grab a piece of paper because you're going to select five different cards and it's going to be a whole lot easier if you just write them down <laughs> now right. again if you were here um we, I'd lay down five cards. Let me try and get these spaced out a little bit so everybody can see. And then you'd be given the deck. You'd have the option to shuffle it up to your heart's content. And then from here, you'd pick any four cards to put on each pile. You could take them from the top. You'd be allowed to take them from the bottom. You could take them from the middle. Two, three, four. So that we had five cards on each pile taken from different spots of the deck one two five and then you'd get to shuffle them you'd get to mix them all up each person would have the option to mix up their pack but you my friend are going to be representing all five of our volunteers and this is where your expertise at writing comes into play i'm going to show you each little packet of cards and i'm going to ask you to write down one of those cards so from packet number one, let's see. Might be easier if I hold it up. Yeah, nah, nah. Better do it yeah. down here. Yeah. Uh, I got an ace of spades, a seven of spades, three of clubs, three of diamonds, and king of clubs. All right, thank you. You got one, okay. Uh, and you'd be allowed to mix them up. Uh, number two. Your options here are Jack of Diamonds, Two of Spades, Six of Clubs, Six of Diamonds, Eight of Clubs. So right. pick any one of those, and Thank that's you. written down as number two. We mix them up. Card number three, Seven of Clubs, Ace of Diamonds, Three of Spades, Queen of Spades, Four of Clubs. Writing one of those down for number three. They get uh -huh. mixed. Fourth, Ten of Hearts. Four of spades, six of spades, four of diamonds, king of spades. A selection has been made because I can see him madly writing. Your fifth and final choices, uh, eight of diamonds, two of hearts, two of clubs, five of spades, ace of hearts. So you've got all five cards written down. Uh, let me grab up these. It doesn't really matter what order. But I'm going to start laying them down in rows. Um, now, you know what? I'm going to go across so that I can make sure I've got it balanced here on my screen. Yeah. You will will go one by one with the cards selected. And you're just going to tell me what column it's in. Here, I'll make it a little easier. We'll, we'll call them A, B, C d and e so we don't get confused so the very first card you picked is it in column a no. b c d or e uh column c oh it's in column c 
All right, then I want you to think about it. Think carefully about, oh. It's a black card, a low one. Three of clubs, was that the first one you selected? You are, you are correct. Wonderful. The second, is it in column A, B, C, D, or E? E. Oh, it's an E. Okay. Okay, we're thinking about last one was black. Uh, oh, so this one's red. Last one was low. This one's high. You keep you were switching on me. That's fine. It was the Jack of Diamonds. That is correct. That is correct. Uh, the third one, column A, B, C, D, or E? Column C. Oh, C. All right. C. You've gone black, then red. You've gone back to black, but you stayed high. It's the queen of spades. You are correct once again. Four one. I'm cooking good. I'm cooking good. <laughs> this is this is this is the best I've ever done on Kevin's show. This is wonderful. Uh, the fourth card: A, B, C, D, or E. Um, column C. Oh, C. Oh, they're all all black ones in that one. Okay, all right. So we're 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 staying black this time. You didn't switch back and forth. Oh, you didn't go very far. You you did you did not go far. King of Spades. You didn't go very far at all. King of Spades. All right. You are very good. Yes, yes. One last one. The big one. Here we go. The fifth. Again, is it A, B, C, D, or E? Can I get five for five? Can I get five for five? Um uh it's in row a oh 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 a over here all right we've done two high black cards in a row you had reds and lows high two big i mean the king and the queen of spades were right beside each other so you went the exact opposite you went as low as you could go you went to the two of hearts that is correct brilliant brilliant then I thank you, my friend, for all of your help. This is this is United States and Canada working together as partners next to each other to bring magic around the globe. But all right, my friend, thank you so much for your help. And Kevin, back to you in the UK. Thank you. Fabulous. Hey, thank you, Alan. Yeah, I love that. And five out of five. A uh, a five out of five medal will be on its way to you. <laughs> So, uh, from one part of the USA to another part, down, down south-ish to uh, Texas and the land of silk and flowers and Robina. Hi, Robin. Come in.
Thank you. Thank you, Rovina. I'll let the music fade away. Oh, do I press the button? And like that. It's gone. Where'd it go? There we go. So A plus there, Robin. <laughs> Thank you. Fabulous. Okay, so from uh, from the USA back to the UK, and as I always say when we're going to see this young man, uh, sort of north from me, then turn left a bit, over a bit of water, and you're on the wonderful Isle of Man, and the dark and mysterious Michael Kelly. Come in, Michael. Dark and mysterious? It's Christmas! Ho, ho, ho! <laughs> ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Except it isn't, is it? <laughs> But if you would have a look around the stores, you'd think it is, because they're already selling all the bits and pieces for Christmas. It's not even Halloween yet. But you know, families have to start thinking about Christmas at this time of year, especially when the old purse strings are a bit tight as they are for a lot of people at the moment. You have to plan ahead for the expense. I wonder, please, Leon, would you be able to help me tonight? I have a box here all ready for you. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I brought it especially. I, I knew you'd want to see it. Well, it's always, I mean, always special. <laughs> oh, it is. It is. You'll love this. Um, I want to take us back to a Christmas, oh, many years ago, back in the 1930s. Um, and a, a carpenter named Tom, who lived with his wife, Rachel, and their three children. Well, I say he was a carpenter. Uh, Tom's tools weren't the best, and nor were his skills. Um, he, they got by, but they had to scrimp and scrape a bit. And then, of course, the Great Depression came, and he wasn't much of a handyman, and people weren't really willing to spend what little money they had on somebody who couldn't do a decent job. So things got even leaner. And they got leaner still when Tom, determined to sharpen those skills of his, was out in his workshop one night and cut off his thumb with that old saw of his. Oh, man. There's not much use for a handyman with only one opposable thumb. But he wouldn't take telling. Rachel, his wife, she kept asking him, Tom, go and try to find some other kind of work. But he was obstinate. He could do it, except he couldn't. Money got tighter and tighter. Christmas was coming. Rachel didn't know what she was going to do. Couldn't afford to buy presents for the kids. Couldn't afford to put food on the table. So she did what people do. She did the best she could. She managed to get a few little knickknacks together. They weren't much, but presents for the kids. And she thought, I'll, I'll make them look fancy so that they're a bit more special than they really are. And we'll have the best time we can. And maybe if we make a game out of dishing out the presents, it'll make it a bit more fun too. So Leon, you're gonna play the role of Tom, okay? Okay. okay. And, I'm going to play the role of your wife, Rachel. And Lovely. I have to say, Tom, you've made better choices. <laughs> so Rachel got the presents and she packaged them up really well <clears throat> into five little individual boxes. You see, Liam, I've got six boxes for you tonight. <laughs> That's crazy. We've got a dark brown one, a light brown one. There's a blue one, a red one, and a gray one. And between them, Tom and Rachel will decide who gets what gift. Okay. So <clears throat> they have three children. The oldest girl was Lisa. The middle child was the boy, Willie. And then the youngest daughter was called Sarah. So they thought they'd start with the oldest child. Uh, Lisa. Now, she had to do quite a bit of work around the house, so she was quite a quite a solemn child. And I don't know, 
Tom, as I look at this, I don't know whether we should cater to a playful side by giving her the red box, or whether we should maybe cater to her more solemn side by giving her the dark brown box. What do you think? Which one should Lisa have? I think for Christmas, we should try to cheer her up with the red box. Let's give her the red box. So that's yeah. Lisa. Yeah. Okay. So the next child is uh, the boy, Willie. Now, let's keep the dark brown box out and bring out the light brown box to go with. Actually, no, you make the choice. We've got four boxes here. It's your turn, Tom. Which of these two do you think Willie would like best? Dark brown, light brown, gray or blue? Choose any two. <coughs> I would say either the blue yeah. or the dark brown. The blue or the dark brown. Well, thanks to you, Tom, <laughs> Willie has to shoulder a lot of the work around the place. He, he really is the man of the house now. So we'll give him the dark brown because that's a bit more solid. And so let's look to the youngest daughter, Lisa. <laughs> she likes she likes the outdoors. So we've got this one, which is a nice natural wood color. She also likes pale colors. So there's the gray one. Which do you think she preferred? Let's go Brown. with the let's go with the pale one, the gray one. Go with the gray. So that is for Sarah, the youngest girl. And then, I mean, I'm the mother of the household, so naturally it would be me next. <clears throat> and it, it would be my choice, but I pack the presents so I know what's what. So you choose then, Tom, brown or blue? I think you should have blue. You're choosing blue. Okay, there we go. <laughs> so let's go for, let's see who's got what. First of all, there's Lisa, the oldest girl. This was what you chose for her, Tom. Well, that should brighten things up for her. Two little jars of glitter, one red and one green. She can use that for her art. It'll brighten up her day a little. That's yeah. not a bad choice. Let's see what Willie's got. Oh, what else would a boy want? Jelly beans. <laughs> yeah, perfect right choice. Perfect. <clears throat> How about Sarah, the youngest girl? What did we give her? Oh, got her a woolly stone. Well, in this family, she's going to need that as she grows older, Tom, isn't she? I think so. So, you said you wanted me to have the blue. I would like for you to. Okay. Well, let's see what you've got first. Okay. Well, Tom, you've got a pair of dice. So maybe you can stay out of that workshop and play some games with the kids now and then, you know, instead of wasting your time out there, because we all know what happens there, don't we? Uh, yeah. Yeah. And what have I got, Tom? What's the one thing that I've been missing? I'll tell you what it is. A husband with a thumb. <laughs> There's Tom's thumb. <laughs> <laughs> so quit messing around and get back to work. <laughs> Very good. Thanks, Leon. And back to you, Kevin. <laughs> crazy. Absolutely crazy. Thank you, Michael. Terrific stuff. And thanks, Leon, for uh, playing your part. Okay, running order. Oh, right. So this is a gentleman who joined us for the very first time last week and astounded us with... Uh, 
with something done with calculators. So over to Israel and Moshe, come in. Hi, good evening. Uh, I'm going to go now to something else. It won't be calculators this time. Uh, do you like surprise birthday parties? Well, I do, as long as I'm not the one being surprised. You know, every year before my birthday, the week before my birthday, nobody calls me, nobody sends me messages. It's like I don't exist. My wife's all the time sitting in the side in her phone, whispering into her phone all day. At the day of my birthday, it's about this more of the same thing. Nobody calls me, no messages, no flowers, no presents. And I, it comes eight in the evening. I'm really lonely and frustrated. I just get on my pajamas and I go down to the dark kitchen, open the refrigerator. As I open the refrigerator, suddenly the lights go on. My wife is standing behind me with a cake. My kids next to her with presents and all my friends and family are there shouting surprise. They come up to me say happy birthday. After a few minutes, they forget about me. They just, you know, they say how every year we can't surprise me. He never catches on, blah, 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 blah. So I decided that the last, last year I decided no more. I'm the one surprising. Nobody's gonna surprise me. I'm gonna surprise myself with a ticket to Las Vegas. So I take a flight to Las Vegas, arrive there, go into the casino to play poker. I sit down at the poker table. That's what you do in the casino. I sit down, the dealer deals me some cards, five cards. I look at the cards and I cannot believe my good fortune. Look. I got five aces, amazing. I've never had five aces before. You know what five aces are in poker? Well, there are no, you can't have five aces in poker, you can have four, but you know, I'm a professional poker player and I put on a poker face and I, I'm not gonna show anyone that something's wrong, but then the dealer, the dealer looks at me while I'm spreading my cards And she notices that I have four blue cards and one red card. She says, listen, you gotta give me back the red card. I look at the cards, I said, wait, wait a minute, let's take a look. And I see we've got an ace of clubs, an ace of diamonds, ace of hearts, ace of clubs, ace of spades. Wait, there are two ace of clubs. So I give back the red back ace of clubs. And she gives me a five of hearts. Now I'm thinking, are there five of hearts in poker? Doesn't it start from seven? But that's, that's not really what, what bothers me. What bothers me most is I couldn't remember did I have four blue cards or one red card or four red cards and one blue. Well, while I was trying to figure it out, suddenly the lights go on my wife standing behind me with a cake, the kids next door holding presents, all my friends and family are there wishing happy birthday. Now what about me? Well, I'm left with all the bills that I have to pay for all the travel expenses of all my friends and family. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Isa. I did not see that coming. Fabulous. <laughs> Terrific. So from Israel over to, uh, we're going to skip the USA and head off to Canada to see our next magician, the fantastic Dr. Michael Larkey. Hi there, Michael. Hi, everybody. It's a pleasure and an honor to be back here this week. Um, I'd love the assistance of someone uh, from our audience. Um, how about Jill? I don't know if Jill is present. I did scan the audience, to be honest. 
Um, so can we bring up Jill to assist me? Hi, Jill, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Awesome, you're looking fine. Um, what, uh, I'm, I'm gonna share something very, very near and dear to me, and that's gesturing during a magic effect. And it was very popular in the 70s. It was, you know, we do the, the, these various hand movements and things to symbolize the magic about to happen. And um, I'm wondering if you have a favorite gesture that signals the arrival of, or that magic is about to occur. Can you share that with us? because we're gonna be using that in a, in a few minutes. Ah, I love it. I love it, there we go. Very magical indeed. So we're gonna keep that in mind because you're going, to, um, you're going to assist me with that gesture. Right now though, we're going to use the black envelope of mystery. And within the black envelope of mystery, which I keep locked, I'm gonna share with all of you, I sure wish you were all here today, not only because you could hold your hands out for me, but it would be really fun as well. We're gonna lock up this envelope and keep it in plain sight the whole time. Hopefully that will stay like so. Jill, I wanna share with you the fact that I have about, 12 or 13 cards, they all have holes through them, sort of like my head. You can see through these effects as well. And what I'm gonna ask you to do is to select one in a very random, supposedly random method by calling stop as I'm shuffling. Stop. Right there. So you did have a perfectly free choice. I won't look at the card. Do not call it out as well, anybody in our audience or you as well, Jill. We're going to bury it, whatever it is, deep into the center of the pack. Now the gesture comes in handy. Let's do the gesture. This is mine in particular. We're going to do something, in fact, exactly like this. Now we're going to go through the cards one at a time in the hopes of finding your card. You haven't named it at the very moment. I have no idea what the card is. I've heard no mention of the card. What was the name of your card, Jill? It was the Ace of Spades. It was the Ace of Spades. We're going to open up the black envelope of mystery. It's called the black mm -hmm. envelope of mystery for a reason. For within the envelope itself is one card. And what was the name of your card once again? The Ace of Spades. This is indeed your ace of spades. I wanna thank you, Jill, so much for helping me and all of you for watching as well. We'll see you all very soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Michael Mike. I've, I've, I've got a black envelope of mystery, but it hasn't got a hole in it, so it obviously won't work the same way. I will keep practicing. <laughs> okay, oh, back to the UK and uh, by the accent, I would say north of the border, to uh, our new good friend, Scott Patton. Come in, Scott. Well, I'm with myself. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, so I'm going to do an experiment for you. I will need a, a volunteer for this. Um, so if, uh, if we can get a volunteer popped up. Uh, wave your hand if you'd like to volunteer, please. Alan's put his hand up. Alan, where's, where's Alan? Oh, there he is. Okay, he's at the top. <laughs> there we go. Hello, Alan. Hello. Okay, so we're going to get you involved in uh, an experiment of the mind. Uh, we're going to be working with colours today. 
Um, so colors, I've always been fascinated with colors um, because colors connect to emotions, um, but they also connect to psychological stuff. So businesses use it all the time. So things like red and orange and yellow are connected to famous fast food chains to make you eat faster. Or you've maybe heard of Subway using the colour green because it, you know, makes you think of maybe healthy eating. Um, so all different things. Um, obviously we have maybe favourite football teams or things like that. So, and that connects us to certain colours. Um, so I'm going to show you some colours and you're going to get to make all the choices tonight in this little experiment. And we'll see if you can make a good connection. All right, okay. so we're going to bring this down here so that we can see the table. And we have these blank cards, and on the other side, we have colours. So we have brown, we have red, we have orange, blue, pink, yellow, silver, green, black, purple, gold, and white. All different colours. Um, so what we're going to do is you're going to get to mix these colours up into a very unique way. And we're going to do this by using another technique called numerology. Oh. So we're going to have four little tokens, one, two, three, and four, and you can decide what order this goes in. So you can keep it as one, two, three, or four, or you can mix these tokens up. Now, I'm going to tell you what they represent as well. So one would represent dealing into one pile, two would represent dealing into two piles, and so on. So what organization do you want this to be in four two three one perfect four two three one are you happy with that very happy excellent so we're going to start mixing the cards and if you were here i would get you to do this so okay. we're going to mix them first by dealing them into four piles to represent the number four which starts mixing up the cards and all the different colours. Right. We're now going to deal them into two piles to represent the number two, which starts to mix the cards up even further. Then we're going to deal three to represent the number three. And then last but not least, the number one. So we'll just deal them into one pile just like that. Now, depending obviously what you put these numbers in, order wise this would be in a different order with all the different colors correct correct good all right so we're going to put them aside for a second but keep them in view and i'm going to introduce you to some other cards now they're called prediction cards they've got different colored backs all right now i know what these colors are but as i said before in this experiment i want you to make all the choices so you're going to decide the order of these four colors and that's the way you're going to do that the way you're going to do this is we're going to deal this into two piles and you're going to decide if you want the right pile to go on top or the left pile to go on top and you're going to make two choices you're going to do this twice all right so for your first choice would you like left on top or right on top right on top perfect we're going to do it one last time and again you make all the choices do you want left on top or do you want right on top? Left on top. Left on top. Perfect. So what we're going to do is we're going to just spread these cards out and leave them in the order that you put them in. Mm -hmm. We're also going to take four cards off the top of the pile that you mixed up. So one, two, three, and four. Four cards. Okay. And we're going to lay these four cards out just down here. There we go. Now we're going to see what four cards that you ended up with. Let's see what colours you ended up with. We've got a blue. We've got a red. We've got a green. And we've got a yellow. Four random colours. Now that could be silver, could have been gold, it could have been purple. You saw all the different colours that we had, but you've now got blue, red, green, and yellow. Yeah? And you also have these prediction cards here, which we will come back to in a second. Now, 
first of all, I'm going to show you what was on the back of the chips. Because I always showed you the numbers. Right. On the back of the number one, we have a color red. Ah. Which is amazing because you also chose a card that was red. Right. Number two had the color red. Green, green which also had a green card we had number three right. which had the color blue blue which also we have a blue card and last but not least we've got number four which has the color yellow and that is a yellow card so that would be a perfect match wouldn't you agree it is yeah but we didn't predict the order that's quite annoying and I wanted you to predict the order. But you did mix these cards into a specific order, didn't you? Yes, yes, I did. Yeah. And the weird thing is, this card is also blue. This card is also red. This card is also green. And this card is also yellow. So I think you've done yes. absolutely excellent, Alan. You've done four a for perfect four. Yes. four for four. Yeah. Perfect match, a perfect connection, I would agree. Yeah? But Definitely. I would usually stop here because that's usually good enough. Yeah. But I think you've done something even better. And I'm glad that I've chose you, Alan, because on your background, you'll see that you've got lots of colours. Mm -hmm. So I think you are very connected to colours. And you've not only done this with these four colours, you've done it with every colour. And I can prove it to you. Because if we move them aside and we take the blank cards back up, you mix these cards into a unique order. This prediction envelope's never left your sight. And if we open this up, inside here, we have some red cards. Now, nothing else in the envelope. But if we take the red cards and the white cards and we take them one for one, the weird thing is we get two purple. purple. We get two white. White. We get two brown, brown, two orange, orange two, pink, two pink, two silver, silver two black, black, and last but not least, the best of it all, two gold. two gold. And that is a perfect match. Well done, Alan, and thank you very much for helping out. Thank you. <laughs> nice job. <laughs> and back to... The studio <laughs> scott 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 get out of here <laughs> love it absolutely brilliant yeah i love that that is uh yes you can come back <laughs> alan you're replaced we've got a new opener um, <laughs> um right from uh, from the uk back to the usa uh to uh lee germain hello lee come in Hey everybody, how's everybody doing? Good, I hope. I hope. And uh, I am. I'm really upset because uh, actually, I don't. I don't even want to do anything uh, after following that. Um, <laughs> it's like uh, it's like following Micah. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> I'm going to need somebody to help me with this. Um, and I was thinking about Martin. Martin, are you available? Hi, Lee. Yep, okay, there you are. Now, I'm assuming something. You should never assume anything, because you know the old saying, when you assume, all you do is make an ass out of you and me. <coughs> I'm assuming you have a deck of cards handy. Am I correct? Yes, I have got a new... It, it, it's probably a brand new one, actually. Hang on a second. Um, I've got this. Yeah, I've got one here, yeah. Okay, good. Now, what I want you to do is... Uh, Make sure they're mix, mix them up very well. Shuffle them. I don't want to see them. Just you keep them out of sight. Uh, I'm just going to stay right here. We're going to shuffle them up so that nobody knows what uh, what order they're in. Yeah. And when you're satisfied, then that's fine. Now the okay. only thing uh, you you already okay. Just show me the well. Go ahead and finish. Yeah. Now holding the faces toward me. Show me the cards. Spread them out in your hands a little bit and let me see what you got. Uh, spread more toward the top of the deck. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. That's good. Oh, that's plenty good. Uh, let me see. 
Okay. All right. Good enough. Put them down. Place them down, please. Now, if you would, uh, I'm sorry. Do that. Let me see that again. Because I thought there was a card missing, but maybe there isn't. Uh, okay. No, I was wrong. I was wrong. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Um, what I want you to do now is uh, put the cards back together in a, uh, um, yep, take about a third of the stack, or a stack of about a third of the cards, lay it down on the table, place it down, the, okay, take another third and place it on the table. Now, Next you have to the first stacks, one? Oh, right beside it, right beside yep. it. Okay, yep. Now, you have one in your hand and two on the table. What I'd like you to do is remove one of the two packs on the table. Just put it aside somewhere where it won't. Okay? Yeah. So now you have a pack in your hand and you have a pack on the table. Am I correct? That's would right. You like to exchange, would you like to exchange the one on the table for the one in your hand? Yeah, I will do, actually. Okay. That's fine. So now get rid of the one in your hand because we're not going to need that. Now, the one on the table... The, the, I'm not going to need the, these in my hand. I'm not going to no, need no, these. Right, right. Do I put those with the first pile I put to one side? Yes. Yeah, okay, yes. so I've just got one pile on the table now. Yeah. Now, if you would, take that pile and break it and divide it into two stacks. One card here, one here, back, back and forth. Okay? okay? Do you have two stacks? This is a great, this is a great thing for Zoom, I found out. Now, you have Doing two that? different stacks. Yeah. Okay, the last the last card you laid down, turn it over and look at it. Don't tell me what it is. Just turn I don't remember which one was the last one. <laughs> okay. Well, let's hope we get it right. And now okay, uh, that that will be your value card. Okay. That's the value card. Okay, if yeah. Like if it's if it's a three, that a three yeah. it will be the three. Okay. okay. Turn over the other the top of the other stack. Okay. And that will be your suit card. Okay. Okay. Now, what what is the card you came up with by doing that? It's probably the three of clubs. But it could be another one. Should I tell you what the other one could be? Yes. It could be the two of clubs. Well, then, like I said to Robin earlier this evening when we started this, uh, oh. <laughs> All the bad stuff. She's laughing. I can see her in the background laughing because it worked exactly like I said it would. Uh, I had a card right here. Right. And uh, you had said the card was the three of clubs. Yeah. Well. Wow. I guess I didn't screw up as bad <laughs> as I thought I would. Thank you very much. Back to you, Kevin. Very good. Excellent. <laughs> Thank God. You'd be worried there. You'd be worried there, Lee. Uh, not as much as me. <laughs> and relax <laughs> thank you Lee thank you you had us all worried there Lee we all go ah oh, what's happening <laughs> oh. oh yeah anyway oh wow um, staying in the USA over to uh, uh, the uh, little bit a little bit near New York I think it's the Jersey area and uh, a gentleman who we haven't seen was he's been missing in action was he's been actually working s patrick come in s patrick i know i know it's it's terrible having a job at three o'clock in the afternoon on a wednesday you know? <laughs> it's terrible i know uh good afternoon everybody is it well actually actually i should probably say good evening to all of you folks over over in england uh it's okay Cool. Somebody's talking in the background. I love it. All right. So, uh, so it's actually it's actually three o'clock here in the afternoon. Actually, three thirty ish. I think somewhere around there. And uh, I'm waiting on. Actually, I'm waiting on the grandson to come home from school. He should be walking in the door any minute now. Uh, and of course, for the last few days, it's been raining outside here in the in the northeast part of the United States. So I know exactly the first thing he's going to do when he walks in the door, because he does this every time he rains and he can't go outside to play. He says, he says, pop, pop, can we play a game of Uno? You know, because that's his favorite game. Uno, he loves the card game. It's awesome. Every single day, if he can't go outside, the, the very first thing he does is ask me to play a game of Uno. He loves the game. He's stuck on it. It's like a thing with him. And as a matter of fact, the other day, I was trying to practice some card tricks. 
And uh, he was bugging me all afternoon to play Uno. So I finally had to stop rehearsing for a little bit and go over and play some Uno and then, and then come back to my card tricks. And, uh, and uh, well, it's crazy. But anyway, speaking of card tricks, let's, let's, do, a, let's do a card thing. Uh, I, wanted, I wanted to have a, a card selected from a deck of cards. And um, I want to try to do it randomly. It's, it's the most random way of, uh, uh, at, as possible. So if I could get uh, if I could get Stuart to just give me two two random volunteers to pop up on the screen, uh, so we could use two people instead of one. Uh, that way, that way, there's there's no shenanigans going on, and we could we could kind of choose a playing card at random. So if I could get uh, somebody to let's see, oh Charles, hey, how's it going? Awesome. I haven't seen you in uh, forever. Awesome. How you I'm been, man? To... <laughs> good, happy good. to help you. Good. I'm wearing awesome. pajamas. Look here. I got pajamas. I see that. Happy to help stunning. you. Stunning. Absolutely stunning. And and John, very good. John. Good evening. Nice to see you again, John. Very nice. Uh, let's uh let's choose let's choose a card, but let's choose it at random. Uh so Charles, I defer to you first. Uh there are 13 cards in each suit from one to thirteen. So if I could get you just to, to, to choose a number from 1 to 13. 7. Very good. Uh, and, and John, let me get you to further randomize this by, uh, add, say, going 1 up or 1 down from 7. Uh, 6. 6. Okay, very good. So we've got 6. Let me refer back to Charles. Charles, there are two uh, colors. There's uh, red cards and, and black cards. Um, so if you were to choose between red or black, which one would you choose? I'm feeling black. The okay, black, very good, yeah. very good. Black and John, the final the final question is to you. We have uh, two different types of black cards. There's clubs and spades. So if you were to choose one of those, club or spades, which one would you choose? Clubs. The clubs, very good. All right, so we've got the, the six of clubs. Six of clubs, awesome. Okay, so... Going to go ahead and open up the deck of cards here. Let me flip over to the camera. Very good. Okay, so we're going to take out the cards and we're going to do a card trick. So, uh, um, uh oh, <laughs> uh, guys, I, I I sincerely do apologize. Um, to, uh, look, look at this. Look at this. I, I think my grandson kind of did something. Uh, I don't know if he did it intentionally <laughs> or not, but look, I've got a deck of Uno cards inside my, my card box over here. He he must have mixed the two. I asked him to clean up the cards. He must have put the Uno cards in the regular deck, and he probably put the regular deck in the Uno box, and uh, I, I don't know what to do with that kid. I don't know. It's a deck of cards. It's, it's crazy. Um, and I have no clue what to tell you guys, but to, Oh, wait a minute. There's a playing card. There's a playing huh. card inside of this deck of Uno cards. Just one playing card. I, I'm wondering, I'm wondering, could it be the six of clubs? No. Yes. It's the six of clubs. I, I have no clue how that dude does it, but it's just, it's amazing. Uh, yeah, you know what? I, I feel you guys have been cheated. I feel you guys have been robbed of a card trick. So let me let me go ahead and do a card trick for you guys. Uh, and it's actually kind of a weird card trick because for the last week or so, I've been, I've been thinking in my head about the differences between magic, okay, specifically who one who does, who does card effects, and a mentalist. Who does card effects? Because you see, even though it may even be the same card effect, a magician and a mentalist would definitely approach it differently. See, and let, let me let me share with you what I mean. So, uh, a card magician would probably take out a deck of cards, and he'd take them out, and he'd give them a little bit of a mix. Uh, I'll just yep, I'll just take the cards. And we give the cards a little bit of a mix and we even drop them on the table just like that because I'm really terrible with cards, but that's okay. Uh, and we get, uh, we get uh, let's say we'll get Charles to choose a card uh, from this deck. So I'm just going to ripple through the cards like this. And Charles, if you could just tell me when to stop at any random point. Uh, stop. Right there. Very good. Okay. Stop there. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So he stopped me at a card. We will lay this card down on the table. Now, 
I will show you guys this card. I'm going to lift it up and show it to you. Trust me, even though you can't see my face, I'm not looking at the card. Can you see the card? Yes. Mm. Very good. I'm going to place mm -hmm. the face down mm -hmm. right over there. Good. I'm going to be able to turn back now. All right. And what the magician would do is he would take the card and he would place it back in the pack. And he would do a couple of shuffles and a couple of cuts, probably some fancy stuff. He would probably swing it out like that. He'd, he'd probably do this this fancy, you know, one-handed swing cut thing, you know, but, but I'm not a magician, so I don't do that stuff, <laughs> right? I'm actually a mentalist. So a mentalist, a mentalist would look at it this way. He would say, you know, as a mentalist, I have the innate ability to be able to subtly influence someone's mind into choosing a specific card. And as a matter of fact, to prove my point, I actually have a card inside of this glass. This is the back of the card. On the front, I actually printed a card, the card that I was going, I was pretty sure that you were going to mentally be forced to choose. And it's inside here. Let me show you. The card that I mentally forced you to choose was the Eight of Spades. The Eight of Spades. Was that correct, Charles? Was the Eight of Spades? Doesn't feel familiar. No, it's not. It's not the eight. Of... Oh, well, then you know what, guys? It's a good thing. It really is a good thing that not only as a mentalist, I do, I have magic to fall back on because I am also a magician. So please, if you would, watch the glass as I place the card inside. And wow. inside there, the card has magically changed into a three what? of hearts right there. Is that your card? Yeah! It is your card, ladies and gentlemen. Magic always comes through in the end. Thank you guys very much for allowing me to come on and enjoy this special time with you guys. Thank you so much. Now it's time to go back <laughs> to Mr. To Lord Kevin Peel in the studio. <laughs> that was amazing. Amazing. Yes, yes Patrick. What just happened there? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> on screen. Wow. <laughs> so, moving not uh, very, very far from S. Patrick in USA terms is New York City. And our next performer, the wonderful Mr. Tommy Burnett. Come in, Lord Tommy. Hello. How is everyone? I hope you're all having a great evening so far, and I'm going to try something. I've been, I've been watching movies all day, because uh, I've been bored, and yeah, I, I have a movie queued up right now. Uh, I, I, trust me, I haven't been watching it during the show, but as soon as the show is over, I'm going to go back to watching it. One of my favorite movies about magic is called Now You See Me. <clears throat> if you haven't seen it, definitely go watch it. It's a great movie about some really great magicians. Um, and I, I, I was planning on doing something out of the movie, but I don't have anything out of the movie, so I'm going to say this. So can I get a... Uh, <laughs> and never told that joke again. Okay, so can I get a uh, a volunteer to go right next to me, please, as I change my camera view? Um... Put your hands up so we can choose somebody. Who are who we going to have? Oh, Scott. Yes, Scott. Do you? Oh, no. We've got Tom. Ah. Oh, we've got Tom. That was the luck of the draw there. <laughs> yeah, tell me, tell me. Oh, oh, faster I, hand or upper? I have, I have, I have the wrong camera. I, oh, that's right. I don't have, I don't, I, that's right. I had to unplug my, my overhead mm -hmm. camera. I wanted to move this down here. Like, whoops. We don't want to do that. <clears throat> Sorry about that. We want to do that. There we go. Sorry about that. <clears throat> Fix it in post. Yep. Fix it in post. There you go. 
my, my uh, Kevin and myself's uh, favorite thing. Um, okay, so uh, that means I won't be able to have my face on here, but that is all right. Nobody wants to see my face anyway, uh, except maybe my my own mother. So, okay, uh, and, and maybe not even her. Okay, so um, these are some uh, replicas of drawings of wildflowers from the, the mid 1600s, about 1640 to 1650, somewhere, somewhere there. The each one is different. The over there. You can see they're all different. Yeah. And um, I'm just going to show you them. So, why is it? Uh, it's the trouble with using my phone for a camera. I keep getting messages on the camera, but you can see they're all different. Yep. Yeah. Hey. I feel like I might have done this for you already, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to mix, mix this up as we say in the in the uh, magic business. We call this a wash. And uh, if you were here right now, you can help me by pulling this out. But I'm just going to um, do this fairly quickly on my own and just um, take these. And uh, maybe let's see, we'll grab a couple of these and we'll put this here. And this one can go here. And this one can go here. And um, we'll put this one here. And yeah, there we go. So, too bad I don't have my overhead camera. I have written two words on these parts because these flowers are divided into two types, poisonous and non-poisonous. Bum, bum, bum! Yeah, see, if, if, if this was live, I would have, I would have that music queued up to go bum, bum, bum! But, but I, I have to do it vocally. Anyway, um, I'm going to place the word non-poisonous on my left and poisonous on my right. Thank you, Kevin. A little late, but thank you so much. Okay. Um, <laughs> so let's do that again, Kevin. Non-poisonous here and poisonous here. That poison. And that's the one we use in post. Okay, so, um, <laughs> okay, so it's your job, Tom, to tell me which is which. Is this poisonous or non-poisonous? Poisonous. Okay, and what about this one here? Uh, poisonous. Okay, and this one? Well, it's got the red berry. I'm still. I'm gonna go non-poisonous. Okay. And this one here. Uh, white berry poisonous. Okay. Somebody knows the plants. Uh, white flower poisonous. Okay. Non-poisonous. Okay. Non-poisonous. Okay. Yep. Yep. Sorry. <clears throat> this one? Non-poisonous. Okay. And how about that one? That's poisonous. Okay. Uh, lady slipper. Non-poisonous. Okay. Uh, Cabbage root. Uh, Non-poisonous. Okay. Poisonous. Poisonous. Okay, we got a few left. 
Uh, non-poisonous. Okay. Non-poisonous. I'm going to say poisonous. I don't like to look at those flowers. Yeah. Uh, poisonous. Okay. Mm. Non-poisonous. Okay, and the last one. And non-poisonous. Okay. Good. Now, it sounded to me like uh, you have a little experience with plants. You're, you're like white flower, red flower. It's a, uh, you, you know more. You know more about about this than I do, but um, let's see. It, what was it about this one here, for example? Let me let me hold this up. What was it about that one that made you say non-poisonous? I thought it, it looked like a lady slipper, and for me, lady slippers are not poisonous. Huh? Okay. Cool. It's actually. Uh, as, as the opium, opium poppy. Um, Is it really? Oh, yeah, I thought yeah, I thought yeah. the uh, little yellow ones were opium. Okay. Yeah, and, and you were right. It, it, it was not poisonous. Um, so what about um, this one here? What was it that made you say that was um, poisonous? This one. Um, right? It was the shape of the berry. Interesting. Yeah, oh, and the okay. color of the berry. Okay, so yes, yeah, so you got that one. You, ah. got, you, got, you got these two correct. Okay, got the two. All right. Yeah, in, in, in fact, um, you got all of these huh. correct. Wow. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty amazing. Everyone gives Tom a round of applause because. You definitely want him if if you need somebody who knows something about it. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And back All right, thank you. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Tommy. Remember, I'm uh, not going to get you well, to cook great. for me. Yeah. <laughs> well, hi. Just talk clicked. Yeah. Right. Okay. That's almost the end of the show. Just time for me to finish off with a couple of things. So firstly, I'm going to call on my very good friend, Jill, because I know Jill loves, loves to be involved in stuff. So the second to last thing, Jill, can you come up next thing? And then the last thing, I will, uh, I need a magician for the last thing. So somebody with a pack of cards. So Scott, have you got a full pack of cards without any missing cards in it? Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll get you involved in a minute, Scott. I'll, uh, okay, Jill. Uh, nice to see you. You're back home now? Yes. Yeah. Exhausted. Yeah. How was the Harry Potter thing? Oh, wonderful. Was it? <laughs> <laughs> and we've done all sorts of other amazing things and stayed in some amazing hotels. Excellent. Excellent. Right. We're going to go to uh, Cable View. And I'm just going to shuffle the cards. That's an attempt at humour. I'm just going to do what Tommy says and never use that one again. <laughs> Um, Jill, red or blue? Uh, red. Red. Okay. I'll just move into shot. There we go. You're going to choose a card from me from this pile in a second. Do one of my awful shuffles that I'm just not very, very good at. There we go. That's all. That's, I think that's more or less mixed up. Was that well enough mixed for you, Jill? Yes, it will do. And we will do as usual and get rid of the jokers. Yeah. We need a card uh, to to move on with this. And before we choose this card, do you? Are you a luck person or a destiny person, Jill? Oh, a bit of both, really. A bit of ah, oh, that's really interesting. We'll we'll use that. And again, before you choose this card, I want you to look in the pockets and look around, see if you can find any invisible dice, 
Well, so we will need two of those in a minute. Have you oh, got let any? Me have a look. Oh, yes. Yep, fantastic. So, firstly, Jill, we need you to select a card. So I'll just riffle down the side and you say stop whenever you like. Stop. Stop. Okay, so there's Jill's card. And we will come back to that in a while. This is my pack. Was you wanted that one? So that one was your card. Again, we're just going to quickly go through so you can see they're nicely mixed and find any jokers. There we go. And I'll explain this little game of luck or destiny. You're going to throw your dice. And whatever number it comes up with, to, we're going to count down in the pack to, to the card at that number. And then we will use the number on that card to count down to the next card. And whatever number's on that, we'll count down until we can't count any further. Does that make sense? Yes. So do you want to throw your invisible dice? And you, you've, you've chosen luck or destiny, so we'll, we'll, we'll play on that in a minute as well. Both of them, and then yeah, I throw both of them and see what they add up to. Seven. Seven. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And if you'd gone one more, it would have been a jack. So, so that was your lucky card. Or your destined card, we're not too sure. So do you want to, I'll, I'll give you some chances now. We can either work with that card or you can change the number on it totally and we won't count five down, we'll count whatever you want down. Uh, no, I think that'll be fine. We're gonna stick with five. Yes. So, okay, one, two, three, four, five. It's a king and of course, if we've gone one before, oh look, there's a queen, that's, and the one after is a, is a five. So that's a king, which is 13. So do you want to stick with, I'll give you one more chance to change your mind on what the card would come up with. So would you want to stick with 13, king, or do you want to change it for another number in the pack? Three. Three. So one, two, three is a two. One before. <laughs> Look, a three would have been a three of the one before. <laughs> Uh, so it's a two, so you can't change your mind anymore. I've given you as many chances as you wanted. So one, two, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Queen, which is twelve. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, which is 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, okay, which is the king of clubs, and king is 13, and I don't think we've got enough cards left, no, so that, those are all that was left, and it wasn't any couldn't go any further. So we left on after all that randomness, and you could have chosen and changed those at any point in time. So we were all going to end up on a different card. You chose to end up on the King of Clubs. And right back at the beginning, from the red pack that you chose, you selected a random card, which just so happened to be the King of Clubs. Wonderful, as ever. Thank you, Jill. Right. So, do we have Scott? Yep. You've got a pack of cards? Yep. Get rid of the jokers in there and give them a good shuffle and keep them out of sight. Okay? I don't want to I want don't want to see them at all. Yep. Yep. Uh, but I need to do a sort of a cold feel of these cards. So what I'd like you to do is just to Hold them in dealer grip, as though you're about to deal. And then slowly, from a little bit below sight, so I can't see them. Okay. Slowly deal a card at a time, face up. 
Yeah, slowly, and just tell me what that card is. Okay. Okay, and I, I just want to take a cold read on this pack. Okay, so go ahead. So, ten of diamonds, queen of spades, two of spades, six mm -hmm. of diamonds, six mm -hmm. of hearts, ace of hearts, five of clubs, king of diamonds, seven of spades, eight of diamonds, seven of diamonds, ten of spades, ace of diamonds, queen of hearts, four of hearts, five of hearts, six of spades, three of hearts, five of spades, ten of clubs, ace of spades. Do you want me to keep going? Keep going, yeah. I haven't yeah. found it yet. Seven of hearts. Five of diamonds, four of diamonds, jack of clubs, ace of clubs, queen of clubs, eight of clubs, king of hearts, king of spades, jack of hearts, three of clubs, nine of clubs, two of hearts, eight of hearts, three of spades, four of clubs, four of spades, jack of spades, eight of spades, two of diamonds, jack of diamonds, nine of hearts, Ten of hearts, queen of diamonds, three of diamonds, seven of clubs. Oh, there we go. That's him. That's the one. It's just hit me. Take that one out, can you? Seven of clubs. Yeah, yeah. Take that one out and put it face up on the table. Yep. Now you can take the whole pack that you've dealt face up and put them back, reassemble yep. the pack. Yeah? Yep. Okay. So now I want you to give me any number between 10 and 20. Um, 15. 15. Okay, so count from the top of the pack, just count 15 cards onto the table. Face down, yeah. Yeah, yeah, face down, 15. Yep. Okay, so you've got some cards in your hand and you've got 15 on the table, and we're going to work out how many to dispose of. So dispose of all the ones in your hand, so you've just got the 15 on the table. Yep. And and we're going to dispose of some of those, so around about half. So add the two numbers together. Five and one is six, yeah? Yep. Throw away six from the top. Yep, done that. Okay. So you've got one card face down on the pile, and you've got a card that struck me. What was that? The seven of clubs. Can you hold the seven of clubs up yep. in the air? Yep. And then the card that you've now got to hold that so it's facing down and bring it up and then turn it round and let's see what's happened. Nice. Yes. And we've found a magic pair. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, Scott. Thanks ever so much. <laughs> right. That's about all we've got uh, time for tonight. We've been a, a terrific audience. Thank you, everyone out in the, in the gallery. Don't disappear, people, yet. Uh, um, I'm going to say good night and thank you to Alan Fisher, Rubina, Michael Kelly, Moisha, Dr. Michael Reiki, Scott Patton, uh, Lee Germain, S. Patrick, Tommy Burnett, myself, Kevin Peel. Uh, to everyone out there in Facebook land, goodbye, Facebook. We will, we will switch you off now. And we will stop the recordings as well.